But I'm stoked. This is a big weekend for us and uh, and for you, Ian. So, dude, I'm glad, dude. It's it's a 11 a.m. game and then a 2 p.m. game. We don't gotta flip back and forth. We get to watch them both. Yeah, dude, huge game. Can't wait for this weekend. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, everybody's either gonna probably turn their phones off or it's gonna it's gonna be a lot of shit talking going down. Yeah, which yeah, which brings us to. Uh, Texas minus six and a half. This was the spread yesterday. I don't know what it is today. It's now it's minus five. Six and a half. Oh, really? Yeah. Dude, I got to. Oh, wait. Well, Texas then. at five. Minus five. Texas minus five because I, I put. Uh, I got. I got OU plus six and a half and to win straight up on some tickets. So it's definitely come down a little bit. Damn it. Well, I got Texas at six and a half and I was like, there. loving it. It hasn't hit seven yet. And he's like, it could go the other way. It's at minus yeah, five. The over under is sixty, sixty and a half. That's, I think what I think what's driving that is uh, ESPN's FPI has a uh, OU favored. Yeah, um, that, really. Yeah, yeah that's the wow. big. That's the big thing, like floating around. It's. I think it's more has to do with the fact. Clearly, I'm taking. I just wrote it down now. Texas minus five, for a fat three. The biggest confidence you can get. Uh, you know, we saw the 49-0 last year. A lot of those players transferred out of Oklahoma, but they did they did bring in, I think it was 11 in the transfer portal. All well, most most of those playmakers on defense. Um and I think that's where the hype coming from OU's coming from, right? They have looked good on defense. Granted, it's against Tulsa and SMU, Arkansas State, and then probably the two worst Big 12 teams in Cincinnati and Iowa State. Uh Texas is better in the trenches, better in the O line, better D line. Um, I don't know. Uh, oh, you might have the upper hand with DBs. Texas has been a little susceptible to the deep ball this year. Watts is injured in the Kansas game. We just got the news that uh, Jatavion Sanders, the big playmaker tight end for Texas, he'll be playing. So I think he leads I, the nation, right? Yeah, leads the yeah. nation in in uh, yards, receiving yards for. For tight end, I just He's think it's too, two, too much. Two, uh, number two tight end to be drafted behind Bowers. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Bowers is an absolute monster. You saw him basically win that game last week. But I think there's too many playmakers, and the depth is there for Texas. We know that. Uh, they've been kind of a second-half team this year, which I think will play into their favor. Um, you know, the environment is – it's it's like unlike any other where they have it split down the uh you know split down the middle right so there's constant cheering non-stop in that game so if you can get up on somebody then you essentially never stop like there you will never stop hearing noise because you're not there's no home away right the other team's crowd is there so if you get up it really benefits you and the other team can kind of get out of it i don't think that it's going to be a blowout by any means but i do think in the second half texas pulls away um just just too many playmakers, and I think the depth is there. So the line is now five. five. Texas minus yeah. five. Man, I did all my betting at six and a half, loving it not being seven, thinking it would go the other way. That's, but, what, that's what I thought too. Uh, I saw it this morning. It dropped to six, and I was like, oh, man, it's going the other way. But uh, I think where Texas is going to have problems, like Ian says, a deep ball, which I've been telling them, this all week and he says all you do is rag on the uh, and you can find anything to make fun of texas i'm like good dude their dbs have been burned even kansas backup quarterback burned them bad uh it was just a, one play one too many so uh <laughs> <laughs> i mean don't get it's i mean it's close right you got two really good quarterbacks you do have like the only thing is we haven't seen if Venable's defense is that good. Like, they've played a bunch of cupcakes. They're getting ready for the SEC, scheduling cupcakes, right? Then you got – they played Cincinnati. This I know, I'm just going. joking. But uh, they played Cincinnati, and then that looked bad for them. They won the game, but it wasn't pretty. And Cincinnati, by, what are they, 2-2, two 3-2? Two, two, they're not wool beaters. 2-2. Uh, two two. Yeah, so I think – I mean – I do think though it's going to be. I mean, it's going to. I think it's going to be a lower scoring. I think the only way that Oklahoma scores is going to be through the air over the DBs. I think 
Te- there's no way they run on Texas. Uh, I think if Texas can just slow it down and gash them, I mean, Texas obviously clearly has a better run game. Just Sark, if Sark doesn't get cute with it, just runs the ball and just, and if you, if yours is in the game because he does have these weird moments, if he's in it. I think, I think Texas wins it. It's just, I mean, it, they, they tend to be close. So I'm just going to take, uh, Texas for one. I mean, and it, I think, I do think it can go either way. Uh, I know the FPI. I mean, I don't really. I mean, I, like I said, they've been just going with that. But I mean, really, it's just Dylan Gabriel is really all Oklahoma has, and they're one like they've only played Cincinnati, so it's hard to get a gauge on like how good is this defense going to be against good schools. Which they did hold Cincinnati, but I mean, Cincinnati's not really any good. Yeah. So. My uh my two favorite teams so far this year on betting have been Oklahoma and UNC. And I did like Oklahoma at six and a half. At minus five though for Texas, I think I probably am gonna switch over to Texas. I I had some bets out on Oklahoma to win straight up or with six and a half. So I did honestly bet on Oklahoma, but at minus five, I think I probably go ahead and take Texas. Uh, this game script's a, a lot of the same in terms of the A&M and Bama one is I think Texas's front seven is going to have to get to Gabriel and, you know, pressure him a little bit. Uh, Texas has a really good front seven as well, especially their D-line specifically. So I think they can do it. They are able to do it. it this is all about big plays, right? If Gabriel makes a few big plays, then they can hang around. But... If if Texas is able to control this game on the ground, I again Ewers, I keep waiting for Ewers to like to break out a little more. Haven't like quite seen it yet. He he definitely I think he's good. Like you watch him, he definitely looks like a like a pro. He could be a pro quarterback, right? He's got the mechanics and everything, but just like I'm just waiting for like a monster game or season like who knows? Maybe it's this game, but I think if Texas can control this game on the, on the ground and they can keep Gabriel from making some big play, like again, the third and longs. If oh, if Gabriel's able to scramble and like keep a drive alive, something like that, those can be backbreakers. But if Texas can do that, and I think their front seven can handle him, um, and if they can get to him before he can find receivers, essentially, I think that's the game, and I think Texas can comfortably run the ball with Brooks. So. I, I think at minus five, I'm going to go ahead and probably switch over to Texas. Just for one, I don't feel too confident about either way, to be honest with you. Um, I do see here on the ESPN thing, it's got 54.4% for Oklahoma, 456 for Texas. I think that's crazy. But, yeah, at minus five, I'm going to take Texas for one point. Yeah, with the FBI, uh, the FPI thing, it, it's because – Oklahoma has been dominant. They're like top five in FPI and offensive defense, right? But it's uh, we're gonna. Fi- I think they're gonna find out what what happens when you know the other team on the other side actually hits them back. So that's one thing we don't know yet for Oklahoma. And then I was just looking right now. The over or under is sixty, and I'm gonna take the under on that. That's I think lot. the oh, defenses yeah. are good. I think the defenses are. Good. It's been a historically very high scoring game, but. I think that, and that's mostly the last decade or so, Texas hasn't really had a defense, right? And OU was obviously with Lincoln Riley. I think that uh, that's more on the history of this game. If Venables is where he wants to be on that defense, then this game should be under, right? So I'm going to take the under as well. Yeah, uh, the I was power. Sorry, under, go ahead, Ren. Uh, Ian, did you say, or maybe I was just maybe it's somebody else, doesn't Texas lead the nation in pressures? They, uh, no, Ohio, Ohio State leads in quarterback pressures, but Texas is up there in quarterback pressures. Last yeah. year, I think they were like top five, but they had very few sacks. Like and this year, they're kind of finishing them off. I, I, I think, yeah, I think it's all going to rely on Gabriel because they're not going to run the ball on Texas. But yeah, 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 Oklahoma, that too. I, I really, it with Venables, if Venables has a good, it's going to be like I said, Ian, Ian said it too. I think it's definitely going to hit the under. And I'm just, yeah, that's really just 
Gabriel. I think they can control him. They controlled Milrow pretty good, and Gabriel's not Milrow. Yeah, the the power index also I think must take into account margin of victory because like mm-hmm. Oklahoma's got some big ones in there compared to yeah like a seventy three zero Arkansas State sixty six seventeen Tulsa fifty to twenty Iowa State and definitely Texas doesn't have anything like yeah. that. I mean, not that that really matters, but their biggest win is by thirty two points, and then all, all the other ones are like within within twenty five. Yeah, they got some duds in there, too, though. The SMU game and the Cincy game were relatively close games for, like, kind of what OU had been doing up to that point. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it comes down some more and I get to play both sides. I'll actually put a bet on, <laughs> like, a money bet on Texas. But in terms of our, our thing, I'm going to take Texas minus five for a point, and then But I have some bets out there with actual money with Oklahoma with the points or just winning straight up. Yeah, I mean that's a it's a good bet because those that those rivalry games are just always notoriously close. You really throw the line out the window. 